right, welcome to our discussion this evening. Before I introduce you to the panel tonight, I'd like you to take a look at some of the statements that have been made regarding that High Court ruling in this past week. That ruling came from the High Court on April the 27th. Let's listen in to what a number of various leaders had to say about it. And now the court says that, no, it's acceptable. You can be a homosexual and you can be uh, a lesbian and not be discriminated against. In other words, you can come out in the open now. It's clear and you are protected. It's a wrong judgment that was given. I think it was naive because it does not take into consideration the Judeo-Christian tradition that we have inherited as Christians. Mm -hmm. If three judges can sit and decide on behalf of the majority of the people of the Kenyan uh, inclination against homosexuality, saying that, no, you ought not to bring your biblical and Quranic views about homosexuality, we say it is not the law. They have said actually in the decision, which is here, in paragraph 106, your Bible in your Quran does not count. If that is the basis of your objection, Sorry, we have refused. I, I wish to just remind the judiciary that we are the ones who make the laws of this country. Uh, and uh, their job is to interpret that, 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 the, the clauses of that law. The coming in July of the President of the United States of America, Barack Obama, has a, has a suspect relationship with the uh, uh, ruling yesterday because Wherever he has visited in the continent of Africa, those countries adopted homosexuality as a precondition to aid and funding. Okay, so here is my panel tonight. Some you have already seen, one of them you've already seen in that sound clip there. Let me start on my extreme right. We have Irungu Kangata, who's member of parliament for Kiharu. Is the anti-gay caucus uh, in parliament still active? It is. Okay. Yes, indeed it is. <laughs> it is. And so you're here representing that. We also have Harrison Kinyanjui, uh, who's a well-known lawyer in the country. Charles Kanjama, who's here, a lawyer from the Kenya Christian Professionals Forum. Thank you for joining us. Pokimani is also with us, a social justice activist from Mayibuye. E Africa? Yeah. I hope I said that right. And then we have Dr. Njo Kingumi from The Nest. All of these people you've seen on Checkpoint before and on perhaps on this very same issue. So I want to start with you, Charles. Um, what did this ruling mean for you? Everybody's saying this is a backdoor to legalizing homosexuality in this country. Do you believe that? Yes, yes, it is. It totally is. And uh, beyond that, I think uh, the reality of what uh, this uh, ruling will open up for Kenyans, unless it is reversed on appeal, is uh, something that uh, most Kenyans may not realize because it's what is happening in the Western countries. When you introduce this concept of uh, non-discrimination on the basis of what is really uh, something that is prohibited by Kenyan law, then you will find that it interferes with the rights of all Kenyans to engage in their life without having been forced to change their conduct to accommodate a practice that is clearly against the views of the majority. I think for me the most unfortunate thing is that uh, Kenyans have repeatedly expressed their views on this matter, even at the time of the constitution referendum, and we now see uh, a decision that is being made uh, contrary to the majority views of Kenyans, and it is not, uh, in my view, uh, necessary for interpretation of the constitution. The constitution should be interpreted in a spirit that uh, respects fidelity to the majority will of Kenyans when they were passing the constitution. Po, does this in any way infringe on the rights of heterosexuals or shall we say others who may not be homosexual, intersex, and, you know, all of these other groups that we talk about? Do you believe that this infringes on the rights of, of others, thereby causing all the uproar? Mm -hmm. I think it would be important that as Kenyans we also get to read the judgment and hear, tease out the issues that have been raised by the judgment. The most uh, 
predominant issue in the whole judgment is about sexual orientation and what that means for any Kenyan. Sexual orientation, not necessarily just homosexuality or bisexuality, but also heterosexuality. So it is a discussion for Kenyans to begin to understand the extent to which sexual orientation is eminent in our deciding what our self-determination looks like what being Kenyan and being able to express your sexuality, your identity, but also participate in being a Kenyan, being a complete citizen. So for me, the judgment is the beginning of or the continuation of the conversation that we have been having for a long time on what it means really for us as every Kenyan, whether you're homosexual, heterosexual, or bisexual, what it means that our sexual orientation is as important as our identity, any other identity, be it your race, be it your religion, be it uh, by extension also who you consider yourself to be. Yeah. Uh, let me pose this question to you, Jockey, and, and, and we'll come to the others in a moment. So there is this thing that says it is not African, and in fact you heard in the clip the religious leaders saying this is tied to Obama's coming visit, John Kerry is here, um, Bill Clinton is here as well. What do you make of this argument that is propped up every time we have this discussion that homosexuality is not African, and this is a Western agenda? Mm. Um, I feel like it's a shallow argument. Um, and it's very unthought through and I don't think it's a worthy argument of us as Kenyans. Um, if, for instance, our Honorable MP here were to truly be African, perhaps he should be here wearing skins, you know, maybe he should have come in having eaten a drum, but he's not. He's here wearing a very wonderful suit, um, probably has a nice phone from elsewhere. So even the idea of what is African um, can be a little bit convenient based on political agendas and all sorts of other agendas. One of the things that actually is African is the idea of families, the idea of oneness, is the idea of community. And when we see that um, a group like the, Nation, uh, the National Gay and Lesbian Human Rights Commission are actually fighting in order for there to be inclusion and um, for there to not have members of community who are gay and lesbian and bisexual and transgender and intersex and everything else in between, when we fight for these people to not be harassed, to not be blackmailed, to not be raped on the basis of sexual orientation, then we are indeed protecting the family. And that, for me, is very African. Harrison? It's unheard of. I mean, you ask, for instance, the Kikuyu, the Luya, or even the Luo, what you used to call, what do you call, how do you reference homosexuality? It's an African. Let's be real about that. Now, culture is protected in the Constitution. And the tragedy of this decision is that it repudiates what the people chose and elected. One, when the draft of the constitution were on the drawing board, they had the South African constitution. In the South African constitution, we have sexual orientation as a ground of non-discrimination. But when we come to Article 27 of the Kenyan constitution, what we have is sex that is male and female as a ground of non-discrimination. We did not have, we do not have sexual orientation. All right, Harrison, uh, allow me to, um, you know, interrupt a little bit because what they're saying is the gay rights lobby group that they're hoping will be launched is to basically speak for the rights of um, these individuals, not but, but necessarily right decriminalizing, what, what but the rights to perhaps not be discriminated against based on their orientation. But it's a crime. For instance, we have to get rid of Section 162, 163, 164, 165 of our penal code it is a crime. If rape is a crime, so is homosexuality. So do they As not have any rights? Things. Now, we must... Because it's a crime? We, no, no. Allow me. We must bring a distinction between the rights of everybody as a human being. For instance, our good friends here say they advocate for homosexuality, lesbianism. But above all, they're human beings, so they deserve to be treated with respect as human beings. I'm not going to get a panga and cut them up because well, they have the right to that's life. That's what they're fighting. They have to right to life. Uh -huh. However, uh -huh. however, a rapist will not come and see and tell me that. Look, I'm a rapist. I need to be recognized so that I can go and associate. What will they do next? However, they will though, go to school. Harrison. Yes. Innocent until proven guilty. But they have openly said 
But they have not been charged in a court of law and found to have gone against the penal code I think of if homosexuality. I, if I may one come in, the issue is this. The key okay. issue is this. Welcome to you, Jackie. If you have an association, for example, of tax evaders, mm -hmm. they've not been convicted of tax evasion, uh -huh. but they have taken a label that clearly is contrary to a certain penal provision. Okay. That very label, that identifier by itself, mm -hmm. is uh, acting contrary to the law. So in public policy, what you say is that if our law does not allow you to do certain things, will not allow you to define yourself by that particular attribute. You can define yourself in any other way, but not by that attribute. Okay. Because when you do that, you are actually showing contempt for, the, for law. the law. And when you show contempt for the law, you are showing contempt for the constitution, for the people of Kenya. I'd just like to point out that consistently when we reference rape, um, which is, as everybody knows, I'm sure, is non-consensual, we're not... We're not really, we're not really, we are not really, excuse me, sir, and excuse me, sir, okay. we're, not really, we're not really taking into account the large number of consensual same-sex relationships that exist. That is number All one. Right, number two, with that. Number two. With that. Number two, How about sir, if you let me finish, How about if you will let me, okay. incest. if you will let me finish, French. we're not, we're not, here, to discuss, we're not here to discuss the matter of incest. No, 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 it's a point. You see, the point is, you are talking about consent. You are talking about consent. There are no social offenses. Yes, on this consent. They could keep quiet or continue. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Okay, one at exists. a time, please. Regardless of consent. Okay, all right, Njoki, finish your point and then we'll have Irungu Kangata just come in. All right, I'd just like to point out that um, in the, in the, in the, if for the purposes of this discussion, we're talking about the registration of a board that is there to exist to help people to not be killed, to not be raped on the basis of sexual orientation, to not be denied jobs and livelihoods on the basis of sexual orientation, and to not have people be rejected by their families on the basis of sexual orientation. Okay. That is what we're here to discuss. Let us keep to the topic. That is Irungu? a question of right. trying to normalize what is criminal conduct. Okay. It's very dangerous. All right. Irungu, welcome to you, Pope. Uh, my point, eh? uh, no one has talked about the health implication of uh, uh, same-sex relationship, particularly man-to-man. -man. Mm -hmm. uh, it is known worldwide that uh, when you try to penetrate a place where it is not supposed to be penetrated, there are some diseases which can occur. For instance, papilloma human virus. We do have a, a herpes zoster. We do have penile cancer. And because what you are trying to do, you are trying to do something that is against nature. And where you are trying to go is a place where it is used for excretion. So okay, we do so have a lot of point? germs there. It's a fact. It's also a family show. So <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 the, the point is, ourselves, it's, sorry, it's the, the point time. is, the point yeah. is, yeah. they are grave health issues which come along with same sex Some would say there are also grave health issues that come with heterosexual sex. For no, example, compare. unprotected no, no, sex no, no, can no, also no, lead no, no. to the spread of the viruses compare. you're talking no, about. We are talking about com uh, compared. Uh, for instance, what can happen in a heterosexual can happen in a homosexual. All factors being considered. Right. But here we are talking about extra diseases which can occur as a result of such kind of well, uh, number, two. Actually, number two. Okay, all right. Number two. Uh -huh. no, 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 excuse all right. me. Number two. Uh -huh. Number two, uh, the reason why human beings for so many years have been against such kind of a practice is the issue of propagation of human race. Surely, since the time human beings came here, even assuming you don't even believe in the Bible, you believe in the so-called the Big Bang, we have been sustained because of procreation. But even without, with, 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 without people, a man and a woman having such kind of a relationship, mm -hmm. human race cannot be there. All right. So therefore, how do you then expect human race, for instance, to propagate itself unless you're talking about cloning? And cloning is illegal. I need to go back to the point let's, we let's are have, talking let's about, have a about a, we'll the discussion on the judgment on the that ruling. was made. Yes. yes. And that ju judgment for us as Kenyans brings us to the point where we begin to speak honestly about the existence of a group of people who have come out and said we have existed, we will continue to exist, and whether or not there are legislation against or for us, our lives don't necessarily m are not directly linked to you wanting us to exist or not. So for that reason, the three judges who I honor for existing to make that ruling noted that there has been a history of discrimination on presumed and also real or perceived sexual orientation of people. Okay, so how do, what do you make of the argument, and, and this is what everybody is talking about, that this is an illegality, that homosexuality is criminal in the same judgment and in the same one and 
we have that on the Super Bowl. If you can just do that, um, show that up there. The judges also said that they will not uh, base their, their ruling on religious texts. And everybody said, okay, Kenya is not a secular state. But this is what our constitution says in the preamble, Pope. We, the people of Kenya, it starts by acknowledging the supremacy of the almighty God of all creation and lists all the others and says, we acknowledging the supremacy of the almighty God adopt and enact the constitution for ourselves and future generations. So what do you make of that? In the constitution, we do mention God. And so therefore, some would say that we have all our values based on acknowledgement of, uh, of, of God. Okay, I want to acknowledge that, that for a long time that has existed, that we acknowledge God and thus in no way also acknowledge any specific religion. We acknowledge the existence of a God. And in that supremacy of our constitution, we also acknowledge that we as a people determine what and where that constitution takes us, which is why we were part of discussing for a long time what our new constitution that was taken on in 2010 looks like. So for me, I think this discussion, as much as we would like to focus on whether or not the discussion can begin or continue to be about morality and people's personal biases and opinions, we need to come alive to the reality that we are living in now, where there was registration of an organization rejected and a judgment has been made. That means that also, for example, in the last 10 years that I've actively worked with the gay and lesbian community of Kenya, I know that in those 10 years, the steps made have been accremental to make sure people understand and society begins to tease out the issues. Okay. What are we discomfortable about? What are we uncomfortable about? Right. What is this that is okay. so scared? All right, let's talk about what we're uncomfortable about. The issue of God, and I'd like uh, Njoki, perhaps for you to take a look at this, and we acknowledge the supremacy of God. Some would say then all our value system is based on that acknowledgement, which is the first in the Constitution. And like uh, they have said, this is ungodly, regardless of what God you believe in, whether it's Allah, you know, Jesus or, or whoever. What do you say to that? Um, I mean, it's also been said that it's ungodly to have non-propagating relationships, which I think maybe all the couples who are struggling with infertility would, would have a problem with, because um, it's, it's not necessary that you have children in order to prove your, your, your worth in a society. And as Africans, we know this. Like, as, as where we've come from, we know this. We also need to realize that um, the Christianity that we, we, we inherited was the Christianity that was used to subjugate Africans um, during, during the colonial time. And so even the people who are practicing Christianity now are coming to terms with that and starting to understand who they are as Africans in the context of, 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 of this sort of Christianity that they with a find themselves raised into or came into contact with when they were in school. Not all Kenyans also believe these things. Right. So we need to have room. We need to just give one another room. The other thing in the, in the acknowledgement of a supreme being, mm -hmm. I think, would also be implicit the acknowledgement that no human being mm -hmm. deserves to be, to be killed by another, deserves to be raped by another on any basis, mm -hmm. deserves to be discriminated against by another, and that is what this, this, this um, judgment is about. All right, Charles, what would you say to people, and, and Harrison, both of you can weigh in on this one, that uh, Christianity is in itself an African? Uh, the first thing I would say is that uh, Christian, first of all, culture uh, keeps uh, evolving. Uh -huh. uh, Christianity has uh, come into a society and it has uh, enriched and purified our African culture. So that uh, in our African continent right now, uh, majority, more than 90%, maybe 95%, are either Christian or Muslim. So it is not possible for the religion of the majority of the Africans to be an African. So Christianity came and enriched and our existing cultures and purified it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so Harrison, what of people who say, well, this is the same thing? But Homosexuality could come and enrich and purify our existing cultures. We must, we must uh, hold some values to be above those transient, you know, um, notions. Joki draws her cultural underpinnings among the Kikuyu. The Kikuyu had nothing about homosexuality. It was known as Mogiro. If you were caught involved in homosexuality, you were put in, uh, you know, uh, something in your roll down the river, and you died. Basically, the Kikuyu saw in terms of their culture, and this is protected in Article 44, sub Article 2, I must state. And also, if you read Article 45, it protects the natural family 
it, it's a natural order mm -hmm. that the state is enjoined to protect. Now, if we do have lesbians and homosexuals who are now supposed to form an association, what, did, what next do you expect? One, because of their small size, they will want to expand. So they will want to go to your schools, your girls' boarding schools, your boys' boarding schools, your mixed schools, and say, they are the homosexual and lesbian association. What will they want to do? Glamorize it and therefore add to their numbers. That's your next step. And the next step is they're going to try and knock off, and thank God for people like uh, Mish Muir right here, through Parliament, uh, Section 162, 163, 164, and 165. However, they cannot run away from the fact that the majority of the Kenyan people abhor these practices. They are redundant practices. They are not natural. And like he was trying to show that you're going the exit path. So surely, if you saw me on the road driving backwards and I'm actually going the right way, you'd have a question about me. Okay. That's not natural. That's not the proper way to do it. But you want acceptance. You want the traffic laws to be changed so that they accept you. I, I, I think the majority would say there's something wrong with you and you better, you don't know, find a way of being like us uh -huh. or i mean it's a crime right now it is a crime so what i in african uh, practices is this <clears throat> if you are to take again for joki sick the kikuyu the practices of the kikuyu so much mirror what is actually in the bible for instance, about sacrifices, mm. even the Levitical laws. For okay. instance, Leviticus chapter 20, uh -huh. verse 13, All which right. says that it is wrong for you to have a man lie with another man. Okay, Harrison, I'd, I'd like us to move to Irungu, but even as you talk about um, history and African history, um, there's a group in northern Uganda called the Mudokodako, who are effeminate males in the Langi community who are allowed to marry men. Um, there's the Shangan of Southern Africa who had a name for a male wife. In Wolof language in Senegal, references to homosexual men, they were called the Gordigan. They're just, I mean, for as many examples there are of homosexuality being against uh, African culture, there's other examples that, you know, suggest otherwise. I isolated so cases. <laughs> no, 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 these no, no, are isolated. No. Again, eh? All right. uh, two, two points. Eh? Yes. Number one, eh? uh -huh. we must distinguish the homosexuality and what we used to call African man-to-man -man or woman-to-woman -woman marriages. Because, for instance, in Kikuyu, we used to have that. But it was not sexual per se. Right. It was a situation where a woman who doesn't have children mm. would marry another woman, and that woman would get children with other children men. And get yes. So, therefore, what has been happening, eh? the, the so-called apologist who support this movement mm -hmm. have been taking those instances and try to twist them to show as if those were relationships between a woman and a woman, but they were not. Mm -hmm. It was a situation of convenience to girl children. That's number one. Uh -huh. Number two, the main problem with this judgment, it may open up a Pandora box for other groups which may as well come and say, no, we need to be given the right of association. For instance, Mongeke, by the way, they have the right by the way when, you, when they look at this thing to say, no, we have the right to form ourselves, mm -hmm. start championing mm -hmm. our issues, including people like Chinkororo, including, by the way, Al Shabaab. Because the argument has been here in this judgment, yeah. you have the right to associate. Okay. Notwithstanding whether your whether idea is, is supported is by the majority or not. Or not. So, so whether me, it's criminal or not. Yes. To okay. me, the, the, the issue is uh -huh. that the way the constitution was interpreted by the judge may, strictly speaking, open up a border box. Okay. Number two, okay. finally, a uh -huh. final point. Eh? Uh -huh. We are also having a situation where Kenyans feel as if they elected leaders, they don't have powers to show them the direction of society. If such kind a very radical issue has been brought up by a court, which is not elected, it does not have legitimacy of the people. It means... But we are, are being you saying judges don't have the legitimacy of the people? Of course. When you talk about legitimacy, it comes through a vote. You vote so that you do something that I want I you think, to do. I think I would but, say but, 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 it's, not legit, it's not that they lack legitimacy. Right. They have legitimacy, yeah. <laughs> delegated and limited authority yes. of judgment, mm -hmm. parliament of lawmaking right. and the executive of uh, governance yes. in another way. Uh -huh. I think for me I want to make two key points. Uh, first is to clarify what uh, Mashimiwa said, mm -hmm. that uh, in a system of uh, separation of powers, it is important that each arm of government recognizes it's exercising delegated and limited authority. And it should not go beyond uh, the, the 
marks that have been established in the constitution for what they ought to do. But more importantly, and this is a legal critique of the judgment that I hope will be made eventually when the matter is, uh, goes on appeal, as I expect it will, is that there is a danger in constitutional uh, jurisprudence of judges not recognizing the uniqueness of the Kenyan constitution and recognizing that the Kenyan constitution is a product that has been passed by Kenyans to be relevant for our country. It is our law. And the Supreme Court in one case actually noted the danger of judges speaking left, right, and center from decisions of other countries that are based on other constitutions and other cultures uh -huh. and not recognizing what the Kenyan constitution requires. And okay. for me, I feel this is really what happened in this uh, judgment. All right, Njoki, yeah. um, I'd just like to um, ref reference what my learned friend said about um, being able to put somebody in a, in, a, in a basin and roll them down the hill until they die. Um, are you, I, I'd like to know if you're then stating that this, uh, this parts of culture are protected by the same constitution. No, I didn't mean and that. Let, let me finish, let me finish because I let you finish. Um, and so we should still be doing these things because culture is protected by the constitution. Again, when we talk about Kikuyu culture, as Charles said, culture is ever evolving. Kikuyus are not um, circumcising their women, for instance, as much as they used to, if at all. There are very many places you will go where there are Kikuyus who exist who are not circumcising women, and that culture, in that sense, also was able to evolve. I'd just like to mention that our very um, attorney general was at the 21st Universal Periodic Review, where we were kind of assessing where Kenya is as regards human rights and he talked about progress being made in Kenya about um, for, 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 for letting there be social consensus built for the acceptance of gay and lesbian people. This was said by a very AG when he was talking about the landmark case where um, Audrey was able to have the state recognize her change of gender. Mm -hmm. And so these things, while they may not have been accepted some time ago, are being ex accepted right now. That was also a, a legal judgment. It was a, it was a landmark one. And so we just need to find a way in which we can find consensus instead of just kind of sitting on opposite it's, sides it's, and arguing and consensus. arguing we already we are, have consensus and instead of doing this we need mm. to realize that people exist they have always existed and we will continue to exist this idea of isolated cases you will find if you do your research properly it's not true They're not then, isolated see, we at cannot all. we cannot use a judgment of like Mishmua say a three judge bench to actually in my view, with tremendous respect to them, push down the throat of Kenyans, something so abhorrent that the majority, if it were to be put to vote, and you, the, the, the Kenyan viewer, the person who's out there, would you vote for it? Would you say that, yes, we want homosexual? I believe that by the rejection of sexual orientation as a ground of non-discrimination mm -hmm. in Article 27.4 by the majority of the Kenyan people during the referendum was in itself a deliberate act of the committee of the experts to okay. ensure that at least the constitution did not breach on the majority of the Kenyans' belief. Right. Beyond have, that, uh -huh. beyond that, Let's even the opinion way. polls and surveys yes. have shown not a majority, not a vast majority, a super majority of about 98% of Kenyans uh -huh. and are to opposed to this particular All right, just agenda. Just, just, so no, how do have, you get... Let's have okay. point, please. Now I would also like to respond because it is important that as much as we want to deny, as much as we want to run away from the issue, we look at what we are saying. If really Kenya does not have gays and lesbians, there would not be a discussion, a representation and even an attempt to register. That conversation would not be happening because then there would be nobody to speak for those gays and lesbians who are Kenyans who don't no, exist. The reality and above that, second point, above that, for 10 years publicly the gay and lesbian community has existed has represented itself and has also given people the kenyan people who they are part of space and time to have a discussion about what it really means to understand what sexual orientation means beyond heterosexuality so we can continue to sit here and claim that as Kenyans, as Africans, this is an African and godly and all those words we are using, but we will be running away or burying our heads in okay. the sand. All right, Paul, let me just ask this before uh, Irungu weighs in on that. So now that this, this ruling, and we'll talk about the AG's uh, you know, intent to appeal that ruling, but what's next? Will we be looking towards decriminalizing homosexuality in the country? Is that something you see for the future? I am very hopeful that this begins the, that conversation I am talking about where gays and lesbians in Kenya can participate publicly, fully, 
in public life. And what that means is that you can access public health, you can go to school, you can get employment, you can be protected from discrimination that, like Njoki says, you will not be raped because people assume, presume, or know your sexual orientation. But not about that, they want to recruit. They want to hold gay pride. They want to go out there in public. They want to have their churches. Is that, is that a fact? Yeah, no, no, they they want to recruit. What, what we have seen... Do you have proof of that? Yeah. Yeah. What we have seen... Do you have proof of that? Let me break it down. Let me break it down. Please. What we have Please. seen is the voices from the West. The voices and the practices from the West, especially from North America, is that this is exactly what they're doing and they are forcing people that, look, you better accept us. If you do not accept us, we will include your actions of discrimination among hate speech. That's where they're headed. And they're going to say, we need also to be recognized in the marriage institution. And what are they going to say? Well, we may not have equal rights as you do, mm -hmm. but we also want to adopt children. But they are in redundant re relationships. They are unable by themselves in their sexual acts to reproduce. So what will they come for? Your children, you heterosexuals. And what will they do? They want to go to school and say that this is a practice that we want also educated uh, in these children mm -hmm. to form part right. of the teaching curriculum. Let's have is that where we want to go? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, uh, the, the point is, eh, you must be a very good historian when you're looking at this thing. What you're saying it is true. You're looking at uh, what has been happening in the West, and we are seeing that it's going to be replicated here in Africa. So, so, you, so you find the ruling and everything that's happening, Obama's arrival... No, Not well, a coincidence? To me, well, to me, it is neither here nor there. To me, what I'm seeing, I'm seeing a jurisprudence that is coming out of our courts, which is not really deep jurisprudential. That's number one. Number two, and to me, I think that's a very important issue, is the issue which she's talking about. About as to whether we do have gays and why are we talking about them, whereas they are still there. Mm -hmm. The point is, in every society, we shall always have people who are doing bad things. And the fact that we do have people doing bad things does not mean we then recognize that. That's number one. Number right. two, uh -huh. they talk about that uh, this is a consensual act. And Dr. has not responded to that point. I in, our really like code, in our penal code, we have so many consensual so-called victimless crime which are still crime in our law. Okay. Uh, a good example. Uh -huh. Look here. One, bestiality. Two, we have... Bestiality a... isn't consensual, surely. No, the uh, point is... Uh, no, I'm just, just use another <laughs> example. I know where you're going. <laughs> but there is no way bestiality sure is consensual. No, no, you don't know whether the animal consents. No, no, no. I but I, I see what you're trying to say. Incest. Incest. We, 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 we do have incest, right. for instance. Okay, let's where is it that incest let's let is let let me see illegal? Uh -huh. I, uh, Very quickly, we're running out of time. What about suicide? Where is it that I should be told not to kill myself? I, 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 I find a point. Eh? point. I find a point. I find a point. And then Joki eh? can well, respond. Me personally, I would have no problem if that issue was coming coming through voters. In the America, for instance, they have started to legalize some drugs through a referendum. Mm. So I would urge them if Marijuana, they were to agitate, yeah. they convince Kenyans the way I have seen some drugs being legalized okay. in various states in America. Okay. I would have no All right. problem. Let's let Joki respond to that because there's also, like he said, victimless crimes. Some would say um, corruption is one willing buyer willing seller there's really always a victimless crime no 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 not victimless but <laughs> both of them it's consensual if you like mm. i offer you a bribe you accept the bribe but that doesn't make it right necessarily yeah especially not in the sense where it kind of enhances the brokenness of a system with okay. regards to service provision. right um while we are talking about uh, places in which we were, we were we were not we were not adding up um i'd like to point out that Nishinoa, when he talked about diseases in particular mm -hmm. um of every single one of the diseases that he mentioned, whether it was happy zoster, whether it was human papilloma virus, um, whether it was anal warts, whether it was uh, whatever, penile cancer, can also all be found um, among heterosexual people. Okay. That is for one. Um, for two, we are we're really in a situation where um, we are here to argue for the right of people to exist and to exist without being harassed, without being killed, without being negatively treated by society. That is what the NGO board is talking about, and that is what, okay. what, that is what the ruling is All about. Right. With regard to, with regard to um, the ruling in particular, it was talking about um, the, the need for people to associate freely. Um, right. and, and we wouldn't so, we wouldn't have the Kenya that we have now yeah. if we were not a multi-party state, okay. and that was not necessarily just um, a decision that came 
that right. came, that I, came I, from. I, I hear you. It was minority to begin with until yes. it garnered support. Yes. Um, Paul, and, and the reason, and the reason, and let me finish. The reason that we need to uh, amass social consensus, and it begins with conversations like this, where we actually listen and not just throw stones at one another. Um, it begins with conversations like this, and we need to have these conversations in our homes and in the places where we are. Where it comes to the point that if somebody is different from you, do you reserve the right because you are the majority to treat them badly? Okay. That's what the National Gay and Lesbian Human Rights Commission are here to counter. Oh, Nothing right. else. Okay. Paul, as you conclude, this is an argument that many pose and say, so what happens if this setting precedent, if drug dealers tomorrow say, well, you know, we want to form, you know, a rights lobby group. Yes, it's illegal under the constitution, but, you know, there's certain rights um, that we feel because of perceived um, you know, the perception that we may be drug dealers, even though we're not, but, you know, uh, we want to form a, a lobby group, because many are saying that's ex essentially what it is, legalizing an illegality. As I started out, I would like us to also really take time to read this judgment, because it teases out the issues that we are struggling with as a state. It begins to address issues of freedom of association. In association, like you say, a lot of people are struggling to belong to some place. And I won't sit here and say who can and who cannot, but I will sit here and say that that constitution gives us the possibility to continue to want to understand, to empathize with what being Kenyan and being different and being something other than well, what drug is dealers regular. are also Kenyans. Yeah, and Murderers drug dealers are, also are no Ken less human beings than you and me. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they are human beings calls on each one of us to seek for dignity for each one of the human beings. I think also we need to consistently remember that our values, our personal opinions remain just that, our personal opinions. When we want to build a consensus, when we are building a state, it requires me and you and each one of you to sit together and see what is that, like I am saying, what is that makes you so uncomfortable that it begins to give you ideas and demons you chase after. Like I have heard you say that gays want to get married and to claim for. I won't sit here and talk for gays and lesbians of Kenya, but I also haven't had any gay and lesbian sit here and say that they're claiming marriage and all those things you've claimed. Okay. So for us is to stay away from the judgment, right. begin to understand and empathize with the situation to build the Kenya we are looking for. A Kenya that's not dying of corruption and of ills, but a Kenya that's actually alive to the reality that we are living in. And that's a Kenya we all want. Okay. Charles, um, very quickly as I we teach conclude. Criminal law. Uh -huh. Criminology policing. Uh, this past week, the economic survey was released, and one of the chapters is on governance. It lists uh, numerous crimes that Kenyans commit. Crimes are committed in every country. Uh, strategies in criminology you study about how to avoid crime, to reduce crime, to punish criminals, and so on. It is not uh, something new that uh, society finds malcontents or people who engage in what is called deviant behavior. The important thing is that society must be able to educate and be firm on what will be allowed and what will not be allowed because it is harmful to society. And once society makes uh, its determination, as Kenyans did on 4th of August 2010 when they passed the new constitution, then we must teach respect for the law. Okay. And if there is no respect for the law, there's no respect for the rule of law, or if we allow a change of the law without consulting that very majority mm -hmm. that gave the constitution the force that it has, uh -huh. then we are creating anarchy. So okay. I think it is unfortunate that we have uh, this situation where majority of Kenyans, vast majority, right. believe I really the need to cut you off, oh, yes. Sorry. yes because yeah, so of I will just yeah. finish by saying that uh, it is our hope that as the matters go through the judicial process, mm -hmm. that our judges will try to interpret the constitution the way the Kenyans All right. are intended when they were passing the constitution. Okay, great. Harrison and then Irungu very right. quickly. Okay. If you can do it in a minute, I'd thank be happy. You, thank you, thank you. Now, Kenyans, the majority of you do not support these practices called homosexuality and lesbianism. Do something that you've never done before. If you've never written to your member of parliament, or the senator, write to them, tell them, give them your opinion, let them know that you're actually against this practice. Let it go to the legal department, let them know that this is the legal position and this is it. However, however, when they say that they have rights, they should know that there are limitations. I am not free to express myself fully without recognizing that I have a neighbor and okay. that neighbor also right. has 
a restriction okay. to the point that they can go to. So this is a decision made by three people. We all do respect to them. I hope the Court of Appeal does overturn it. And if they go to the Supreme Court, okay. then we will fight all, also there. All but right. the Kenyan time, people should know please. you have a responsibility. Yes. Let and hopefully not to do things they've never done before. That's a little scary. <laughs> oh, oh, that's, no, no, that's a little not a scary. Not a crime. Yeah, not a crime. you know. Not a crime. <laughs> all right. Not a crime. Irungu, yes. very two good. Issues Less only. than. Yes. Not two, please. One. No, two issues. One, <laughs> one, please. Fine. Me, to me, I would like Kenyans to read more as to the social ills which come as a result of legalization of gayism and lesbian uh, and uh, the, the, the same sex relationships particularly and i want uh, particular issues to do with uh, one issues to do with drug abuse two issues to do with various diseases which i have mentioned which all factors being constant don't apply to heterosexuals unlike what dr has said <laughs> and finally yeah. we do have several victimless crimes in our penal code uh -huh. if you do away with gayism if you say gayism is right, then I don't see why incest is still illegal. I don't see why bestiality is still illegal. I don't see. All right. Okay. <laughs> yes. We really are out of time, even though we could talk about this um, for a long time. And I do think this is a national conversation that we need to have, seeing as, you know, a high court made this ruling. We wait to see what happens with the AG and his um, attempt to appeal this. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us tonight. That is our discussion.